Great. Hello. How are you, my pixelated party people? It's been a while since I made a video. So today I'm going to make a quick tutorial on how to create a user persona using this wonderful application called UXpressia. And it is how I created these user personas that you can use as a template uh, from this article, how to create a user persona. So basically, what is a user persona? It is a diagram that depicts a particular uh, person or type of person that you might find in your user group. So let's say you have an NFT collection that is, you know, modeled after a particular video game like Call of Duty. The Call of Duty has a particular base of users. Those particular bases of users could be made up of different personas. And this gentleman here, Ethan Reed, for example, could be one of them. You would use something like a user persona, you know, to build models around ideas of how you would create all sorts of different things, whether it be a new product, a new product feature, an improvement to a product, or content, etc. So with that being said, there's a lot of different things that you can go into a user persona. But again, it's just a makeup of a particular person. And here you can see there's another example. And you can get these from my article uh, on my blog, How to Create a User Persona. Um, and there's a ton of great articles on the web. I've included some resources down here at the bottom. One of the best places uh, that I would find, you know, to start and then to go from there. They're a really good resource uh, as well. So just diving into things, you know, we're going to be using this tool here called UXpressia. Um, it's a pretty fantastic tool. They have a couple different uh, items that you can use. Let me go ahead and sign in. I don't remember my credentials. Um, so when you do sign in or sign up, you know, if you haven't created an account, you will need to. But if you have created an account, this is what you're going to experience on the first time user experience, also known as the FTUX. Um, DeFi, you know, that's probably a good thing for you guys to start adding to your mix is some sort of a first time user experience or some sort of a uh, gateway for users that aren't completely clear with the uh, infrastructures. In any event, back to this UX Presia, you know, when you get set up here, if you're coming in here to create a user persona, what you're going to want to do is start a whole new project and it will take you into this personal workspace where you can go, you can title it. So I'll title it uh, user persona to just for the sake of argument. Right. So now our workspace is titled. And if we navigate back, we can see we have one project titled user persona two. And it's a container, sort of like a smart contract for all the things that are going to be inside of it. Now, I will say you can only do one item when you have a trial account. You know, obviously, if you upgrade, bing bong, you get more stuff. But for the sake of simplicity and the fact that I'm just going to show you how to create a user persona using UXpressia, um, we're going to add a new item. So when once you click add a new item, we have this modal window. Uh, overlay that pops up and you can start to choose the different things. You can choose from journey maps, different types of journey maps, and we can talk about that another time. But this is basically the pathway in which a customer goes to find out about your business and then the life cycle in which they go through, uh, you know, converting to a customer or not. Um, but specifically, personas is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and then we have, you know, impact maps, which are another form of deliverable. So you can create a blank persona. You can start with one that's, you know, sort of filled in. Uh, business to business, you know, you can create empathy maps and you can uh, look at best practices. So let's go ahead and look at best, pra best practices since you probably not are fami familiar with what they are. Uh, and then we'll just dive into the creation of a new one. You know, you have different areas typically. In a user persona, you'll have an image that would represent the person place or thing, whatever you're trying to uh, create some sort of a mental model around. You'll have demographical information, which will typically, you know, talk about age, uh, education, gender income, and you'll have different sets of data uh, around that particular person. Typically, you're going to have something related to motivations and frustrations, why they might be motivated to use your product or purchase your product or, you know, grab hold of your product, etc or frustrating things that they find with your specific product or things in the actual industry. So those are, you know, nine times out of 10, those will be included. Uh, often there's going to be some form of a quote, you know, or some form of a saying that's related to 
you know that persona so you can build even better narrative around who they are, potentially goals, you know, reasons why they might be in the market for this particular item or what they're trying to accomplish with, you know, acquiring a product or a service such as this. You know, what problem are they trying to solve? What are their needs, essentially? You know, that's how it ties into their goals. And background information can be really anything, you know, that you feel is important or imperative to the construction of your character. Uh, oftentimes you'll see things, you know, more specifically related to home life and career, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's just a general rundown. Uh, when you are in this, you know, free version, you can only create one thing at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, reset us back to uh, a Z, and we'll jump right into a blank persona. So what's cool about this tool is that you really can just come up with some quick shit. You don't have to think too much about anything. So I'm just going to grab, you know, at random, a country, you know, a woman from Poland, and I'll go ahead and say generate, right? And there we go. Iga Mrods. I think I said that right. Uh, Mrods. I know Mrods. Anyways, I forget. It's been a long time. Trochę mówisz po polsku, ale nie zbyt dobrze. Uh, one, let's make her between 18 and 24, 19, just to be safe. And what's cool here is sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't work, but you can set some specifics. So there we go. The best part about this is like you don't have to scour the internet looking for shit. You can just go ahead and bing bong, there you go. Now you have a name and a face, and you can start building information here. So she's what? We said she was in that, that age. She's... Uh, let's say, well, let's say she's married, right? Uh, she's a nurse. She makes billions of dollars in ETH. She makes ETH. ETH, like 200 trillion gazillion. Right? This is all fictitious information that we're putting in to help build a picture around Iga, right? What are her goals? Why would she, she's, you know, a collector looking for new and exciting NFTs, right? That's why she's in the market. That's why she's looking for your collection. That's why she's trying to find out information. Um, you know, she wants to find an up, I uh, can't even type, coming artist before they get big, right? She wants to make major investments and get more ETHs. So already we're building a picture around who she is, what she's doing in the market, what she's looking for. And, you know, we can come up with a quote. We can think of something that sh she might say, right? Uh, I'm always on the hunt for the latest and greatest because I want to have stuff that no one has. I like really bright colors, so I gravitate towards uh, trippy artworks. It's the most excite when I find an artist who is just on the brink of breaking through, whoopsies, through, and I snag their entire collections. That's when I makes the most monies and moon. Let's fucking go. Right? There she is. So what did she, what does she do? Well, she was a waitress at a cocktail bar. Uh, she invested early in crypto, made gazillions, right? Now uh, she's into computers, plays, I don't know, the cello. Some shit like that, right? You can put all sorts of stuff there. 
and uh, let's make sure we understand she made gazillions, right? <clears throat> so she's motivated to find unique one of one art. She's motivated to find new artists before they pop. She's motivated to grow her collection. She's motivated to make big bank stack chips, dog. You feel me? So what is she's frustrated with all the noise? She's, whoops, frustrated with uh, same old, same old. She has a hard time identifying real projects and so forth, right? You know, and let's just say, if you wanted to, you could start filling out more shit, uh, the types of projects or products that she's into, depending on, you know, who this person was or what this persona was for. There could be sections on skills or competency in uh, computers or, you know, whatever the market is. You can go even to a further extent to talk about technology. So, like, if you're building a product, for example, for a particular company, fintech, for, you know, I don't know. It might, it might make sense that the particular type of device this person is using. But nine times out of ten, let's, well, let's just put it any which right. She's probably going to be on an Apple. She's probably going to be on an iPad. She's probably going to have that. And she's also probably going to have that because she's gangster and she balls. Um, yeah, Chrome all the way. Right? Put that on there. And, you know, you can put anything here. I'm not going to do any more. But here you go. Here is the basic example of a user persona. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Uh, of a user persona that you can use. You can. It's really easy to create one here in UX Prezia. Um, if you don't know how to create a user persona, there are a lot of great tutorials, and I wrote up some good stuff in that article if you want to read it. Um, otherwise, you know, I think these are great additions and great tools that you should be using to help shape the narrative around the project uh, and the products that you want to build. So. Yeah, see, I can't do anything. It's on the, uh, the bada bing, bada boom. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I hope you found this useful, and I hope you'll have a good time creating your own user personas.